I think I think Tesla will have sort of a chat GPT moment. Maybe the, if, if not this year, I'd say no later than next year. I am the reason OpenAI exists. Man, fate loves irony next level. I used to be close friends with Larry Page, and I would stay at his house, and we'd have these conversations long into, long into the evening um, about AI, and I, I, would, I would be constantly urging him to be careful about the danger of, of AI, and um, he was really not concerned about the danger of AI and was quite cavalier about it. And um, at, at the time, uh, Google, especially after their acquisition of DeepMind, had three quarters of the world's AI talent. They had obviously a lot of computers and a lot of money. So it was a unipolar world for, for AI. And, and if you've got a unipolar world, the person who, who controls that does not seem to be concerned about AI safety. So that sounded like a real problem. So And, and then the final straw was uh, Larry calling me a species for being um, pro-human consciousness <laughs> instead of machine consciousness. And I'm like, well, yes, I guess I am. I, I am a species. More than helped, it wouldn't exist without. Um, I came up with a name. Uh, the name OpenAI refers to open source. Um, so, so the intent was okay. So what was the opposite? What's the opposite of um, Google? Would would be a an open source nonprofit because Google is closed source for profit, and that profit motivation can be potentially dangerous. So, uh, yeah, I, I I fully admit to being a huge idiot here. Anyway, so so OpenAI was like meant to be OpenAI open as an open source. Uh, it was created as a 5-1-C-3. Part of it is also in the beginning. I thought, look, this is this is probably a hopeless endeavor. So how, how could OpenAI possibly compete with with Google DeepMind? I mean, this this seemed like an ant against an elephant, you know, which is not, not, not a contest. And I was also uh, I w was instrumental in, in recruiting the uh, scientists and en engineers, most m most notably uh, Ilya Sutskaya. In fact, um, uh, Ilya went back and forth several times. He would say he's going to join OpenAI, then Demis would convince him not to, then I, I would convince him to do so, and then and <laughs> this went back and forth several times. And ultimately, he decided to join OpenAI. And I I, I do think that there's some I, look, it does seem weird that something can be um, a non-profit open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source. I mean, this would be like, like let's say you funded an organization to save the Amazon rainforest, and instead they became a, a lumber company <laughs> <laughs> and chopped down the forest and sold it for money. And you'd be therefore like, well, oh, wait a second, that's uh, the exact opposite of what I gave the money for. Uh, is that legal? That doesn't seem legal. If it is, and, and in general, if it is legal to start a company as a non-profit and then take the IP and transfer it to a for-profit that then makes tons of money, um, shouldn't everyone start? Shouldn't that be the default? And, and, and then I also think it's important to understand when push comes to shove, let's say they do create some, some digital super intelligence, almost godlike intelligence. Well, who's in control? And, and what ex exactly is the relationship between OpenAI and Microsoft? And I do worry that uh, Microsoft actually may be more in control than say the leadership team at OpenAI realizes. I mean, Microsoft, ha as part of the Microsoft investment, they have uh, rights to all of the software, all of the model weights, and everything necessary to run the inference system. Advising your children on a career with so much that is changing, what do you tell them is going to be a value? That is a tough question to answer. I would just say, you know, to, to sort of follow their heart in terms of what they, they find um, interesting to do or fulfilling to do. You know, try to be as useful as possible to the rest of society. You know, if, if we do get to the sort of like magic genie situation where you can ask the AI for, for anything, and, and let's say it's even the benign scenario, let, let's say it's a benign scenario, how do we actually find fulfillment? How do we find meaning in life if uh, the AI could do your job better than you can? I mean, if I think about it too hard, it frankly can be uh, dis dis dispiriting and uh, demotivating. Put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into building the companies, and then I'm like, wait, well, should I be doing this? If I'm sacrificing time with friends and family, but, but then ultimately the AI can do all these things? Does that make sense? I, I don't know. <laughs> to some extent, I have to have deliberate suspension of disbelief in order to, be, to remain motivated. So I, I guess I would say just work on things that you find interesting, fulfilling, and, um, and, and that contribute uh, some good to the rest of society. Yes, but I mean, honestly, you know, we, we, some of these conspiracy theories uh, have turned out to be true. Well, like the, the Hunter Biden laptop, uh, you know, that, 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 that was a pretty big deal. There was Twitter and, 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 and others engaged in active suppression of information that was relevant to the public. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a terrible thing that happened. That's like an interference. You know, calm down, people. This is not like made up. Think I think that's true. That's my opinion. Okay. But why share it? Why share it? Especially because, I mean... I mean uh, I, this is freedom of speech. I'm allowed to say what I you want. No, I'm definitely. I'm, I'm like. I'm like a pro semite. You know, I'm reminded of the, the, the scene in The Princess Bride. Great movie. Great movie. Um, where he confronts the person who killed his father, and he says, 
Offer me money. Offer me power. I don't care. I'll say what I want to say, and if if if, uh, if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. Well, the the advent of artificial general intelligence is um, called a singularity because uh, it is so hard to predict what will happen after that. But it, I think it's 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 very much a double double edged sword. I think in, it's there's there's a, there's a strong probability that it will make life much better, uh, and that we'll have an age of abundance. And, and there's some chance that it goes wrong and uh, destroys humanity. Hopefully that chance is small, but it's not zero. Um, and so I think we want to take whatever actions we can think of to minimize the probability of people. Yes, I, I, look, when I called for the, yeah, <laughs> a, friend, a friend of mine, Max Tegmark, is a physicist at, at, at uh, MIT, you know, wanted me to sign on to the letter. And it's, it's like, I, th I, I knew it would be futile. I knew it would be futile. I just want to call it like, it's one of those things, well, for the record, I recommended that we pause. Okay. Uh, did, did I think we would, there would be a pause? Absolutely not. It's not, I, I, we don't have enough time, and, and, and nor is this the moment to really talk about it. Okay. Um, we, we will have a launch event, and, and we'll explore the, the issues uh, in, in more detail. But I, I should say that, that, that Tesla has actually um, tremendous capability in real-world AI. It, there's not, I'm not even sure who's second. I don't know. I mean, people do talk about it online. Um, I, think, I think Tesla will have sort of a chat GPT moment. Maybe, the, if, if not this year, I'd say no later than next year. Yeah, suddenly 3 million cars will drive themselves right. with no one. Yeah, and then 5 million cars and then 10 million cars.